I'm here. Um, you know, uh, take us a little bit uh, 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 when you when you decided to make uh, to make the film. This was a a, a script by Ma uh, Canadian writer Ma Martin Burke. I think Barry Levinson was involved with it. Yes, uh, uh, Barry Levinson had HBO and uh, was well, I thought he was going to do this, but so did he. I think for a while, <laughs> but then. He decided to let me do it, and uh, it, the script was much, much longer than the movie. And and the movie itself is actually cut down quite a bit from uh, what we shot. And it, this is a little bit of a departure of your other films. You know, I'm thinking Gremlin. I'm thinking Inner Space. So they were fantasy films. This is more straightforward, uh, reality-based satire. Well, it's certainly. Uh, was more of a fantasy then than it is now. Uh, we've, uh, I've seen the film at various festivals every so often when I re-encounter it. It's amazing how what what different aspect of the movie suddenly becomes pertinent because it's actually happened uh, in real life. There's something that's really going on, uh, and I don't I don't think any of us quite realized how much like the world of this movie we would end up living in, in the future. Uh, uh, the, you, you, said, you, you said in interviews that, that the, you can't hear it? Oh, the sound, okay, so can we try it again? I think the sound, the sound is garbled. The well, sound, it certainly is on my end. It's good on you, but we, it's No, you, you sound fine, I sound, I sound terrible. Yeah, you sound garbled. Yeah, shall we try it again? Okay. Okay, we, can we call you back? Sure. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Does that sound any better? It it uh, it tragically happened. Um, I uh, never envisioned that we would be in the world we are now. It's it's sort of hinted at in the movie because the president in the movie is kind of an idiot. Uh, but um, he's not only at the end just become as you know our actual president. <laughs> Well, yeah, because you know the the, the imprimatur of an HBO movie allows you to get that you have the money to, to to spend for name players, and uh, as a result, I not only got to use all of my usual stock company of people, uh, but a whole array of really good actors uh, in parts that I think are a little meatier than they usually were able to get. Well, the original script was quite long, and uh, there was many aspects of the movie that we didn't we cut out of the script before we shot. But then we still shot a movie that was over two hours long, and a lot of things had to go cutting room floor. Um, some of them actually quite good. I mean, there was a sort of a subplot about uh, the Muslims have taken over New England, and uh, there uh, is a woman protesting genital mutilation. Uh, 
uh, in front of a very perplexed reporter, uh, which was a wonderful scene, but uh, it, it didn't advance the story, so uh, it came out. Um, it, it, this movie has been traditionally rather difficult to see uh, in America because if HBO does not uh, rebroadcast its old movies. And, uh, and overseas, it's much better known because it's theatrical. Well, I, I sort of viewed it as humanistic. Uh, there really are no evil villains. Everybody is justified in their own mind about what it is that they're doing. And to, to understand those people, uh, you, you have to try to get inside their head. And so for me, I have a particular political bias of my own, but I was forced to try to get into the mind, of, for instance, the Bo Bridges character, who is quite different from me personally. Um, but Bo Bridges was one of the most prepared, prepared actors I ever worked with. He, he had the script with all marked lines and, and notes and uh, suggestions, and, and that was true for the whole group. So I, we felt, uh, everybody felt it was becoming their Originally, it was the Charlton Heston to play uh, that part. Uh, not that part, the president. I went to Charlton Heston to play the president. And uh, he said, well, I... Why do you want me to play this part? And I said, well, because, you know, you come in with a certain expectation of what people think you're going to be like, and then this guy is not like that. Uh, and he said, I, I can't do it because I think it's one of those movies that says that all white people are stupid and only minorities know how to uh, run the world. Uh, so he didn't do it. He was very nice. He was very on the phone. But it's quite obvious that politically he felt the movie was skewed entirely toward the left, whereas I don't actually think that's true. I think it's really middle of the road equal opportunity offender. And, uh, you know, in fact, a big responsibility in, in the film and um, is the, the cable channel, the, you know, the television station, the media. I believe at the time it was CNN and then Fox News was just, just about starting, but if anything, today that weighed on reality, they have even more than, than 1997. Yeah. I think one of the reasons that audiences resisted it a little bit at the beginning when they were, when it was new was because it, it suggests that the media have a tremendous amount of uh, influence on what's going on. And that, that was sort of our take on it then. But it's like, it's like if you watch Network today. Network seems well, like a very... The Lumet film, right? Network. Yeah. The when we saw it originally, it seemed like it was a bold satire. And now when you look at Network, it looks like a documentary. You said before that you had a longer version of the film and that were things that the HBO, uh, you know, uh, asked you to cut because of length, essentially. And how, how, would, how different would have been the film if you were the longer version? Well, uh, there, for instance, at the end of the movie, Joanna Cassidy blows smoke into the uh, eyes of her fellow newscaster. That was the end of an actual subplot about the fact that she was a heavy smoker, but smoking was not allowed anymore. And you, could, you, couldn't, you could only smoke if you had a machine that allowed you to, to uh, expel the smoke into a, uh, a box. Uh, anyway, that, that all came out, but of course you couldn't take out the end of it. And, and all movies are like that. There's there's things that they lose along the way that are setups for events. But HBO previewed their movies on in a, in a screening room on the top of their building in Century City, and of course they told everybody it was a comedy, and it is a comedy, but it's it's very dark, and the end is is pretty sad. Uh, and I think that audiences were confused. They didn't know how they were supposed to feel about the movie, whereas in fact, I think viewed today, uh, it seems much more of a piece. Of a piece, of a single, you know, it, it, it's not a, it doesn't have a tone problem like people thought it did originally.
Hollywood to make films that are aimed at big audiences and yet they have substance. And they, you know, it seems like it, there is a bigger split than when you started. Well, it's, it's, it's become more difficult that with the rise of the blockbuster movie and the fact that there's now a lot of money being spent on the movies and they naturally want a huge return in advance. And, and the more they homogenize the movie, the more they think people will like it across the board. Everybody will be happy and throw money, build swimming pools and stuff. But that's, that's not really the way it works for me. I grew up in an era where there were, there were all kinds of movies. Um, but there was no, uh, there, there was no home video then. There was no internet. There were, there were, there weren't places to see a lot of movies. And, uh, so the, the, uh, Feeling on the audience was that they were they were they could see an action movie one day and they could see a drama the next day and and that they were equally entertaining. Today, I think escapism is so important to people because their lives are frankly not what they hope they would be, uh, and so it becomes much more difficult to make an idea film or a film about this kind of thing. I mean, the movie called Vice came out, which is about Dick Cheney, and uh, it's very rare that anybody gets to. Make like that because it's quite an expense, got a big cast, uh, stars, and it costs a lot of money to make, but a very specific subject. A lot of people have strong feelings one way about that character. Uh, so it's more of a risk. And the one thing movies don't like because they don't like making this thing. And uh, um, what, what, are you, um, what are you rooting on for tonight since you mentioned Vice? Oh, what, I mean, for the Academy Awards? Yeah. Um, uh, you want my prediction? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not no, in, I'm I, want, no I want what you like to win, not a prediction. Um, I, I don't I have no idea. I, 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 just between you and me, the Academy Awards are just pretty silly. Uh, you know, uh, the, the nominations are important because the people in each, each craft nominate other people in their craft that they know. But then when it comes for the overall voting, the, the people from the sound division are voting on best makeup. And, uh, you know, everybody's voting in categories they really don't know anything about. And so the actual Academy Awards are really fairly meaningless. I think. The, the nominations, I think, are much more reflective of what people really think. And um, going back to what we were talking about before and how a little harder it's become today to make films that are both, uh, you know, they have a mass appeal and they are also about something more serious and more substantial. Um, Cinema has been the popular art, you know, and uh, do, you, do you see a paradox that today Hollywood is considered to be an elite community? Well, I think the whole idea of Hollywood right now is undergoing a huge change. Um, I, I like to say that movies are a 20th century art form and the 20th century is over. So now we're going to be mutating into something else. And there's a lot of drama to made of that about the Netflix movie, uh, which is up for best form for home and best form and lots of other awards. Uh, there's a feeling abroad in the Hollywood land that if, if, if that film wins a lot of Academy Awards, uh, it's a bad sign for theatrical movies and for movie studios in general, because there's a big change going on here in Hollywood about who gets to make movies and how they get to be distributed. And uh, there's a lot, of, a, lot of, uh, a lot of passion on both sides about this issue. And I think, if, as I suspect, that Roma takes away most of the awards that it's nominated for, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, chest beating and uh, pearl clutching in the executive offices the next day because they, they really don't know where this business is going. It's changed so completely, even in the last year. Um, I was trying to explain, and I did a poor job before, I, before the screening, about how how important you are to the uh, preservation of cinema and uh, it, it's it's you know and, and how you cultivate it both, both as a collector as a filmmaker and as a writer and, um, and I was I, I told them about trailers of hell and I think I did a poor job so can you explain what trailers of hell from hell is to to our audience? Well, you know, all of us who make films uh, build our movies on a foundation that was laid by other people. And uh, the history of film is very important to me. Uh, and I think a lot of young people particularly who would find a lot to like in movies from past years don't get to be exposed to very much. And you can go to Netflix and look at all the titles and if somebody doesn't 
know what they're looking at. It's they, it's just a bunch of titles. So Trailers in Hell was created to try to draw attention to movies that maybe people might not know about. And the hook is that the trailers are narrated by filmmakers, contemporary filmmakers, who talk about what the movie meant to them, uh, uh, what, how it's influenced their work, um, and and hopefully, and, and uh, on occasion, I hear this that somebody says, I, I just, because one of so is my favorite director, and he did a story in this movie, and I looked at it, and now I like it, and I want to see other movies by this director. Uh, and that's, that's it's sort of getting back to people, because they, there's so many films available to see, more so than ever before, and yet somebody needs to curate them and say, okay, they, they, these are films, if you're interested in this genre, then you should you should see this film by this director or this actor. Uh, and there's just not a lot of guidance out there. Okay. I, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Okay. You want to tell me the questions? Yeah, I will. I will ask Joe. <laughs> one of one of a member of the audience. I, you, I, you heard that? Yeah. I heard that. I should if, if, if I should use that for the catch line on the, the poster. Um, it is. It is. It's a. It's a. It's a scary movie because it's a scary world, and the fact that I look at the world with a certain amount of absurdity. Uh, helps get me through some of the darker patches. And I think this movie reflects my vision of how I think you can, you have to cope with what's out there and try to make the best of it and try to figure it out and and just go on, you know, just go on with your life and try to make the world a better place. Yes, yes, I would, but the the opportunities are, are just not, not really there. I mean, it's hard enough to get a vampire movie these days, let alone a political movie. Uh, and I, I just I was I felt very privileged and lucky to have been able to make that film when I did because it exists. And uh, HBO was trying period to do political satires, not just this one, but two or three other ones. But none of them were very popular, and so it more or less abandoned that idea. But I think that there's a lot to be said for motion picture interpretation of the way that. And um, I, 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 if you like this movie, tell your friends; they can see it on, I think, Amazon or something, uh, because it's very obscure. I mean, it's probably the most movie that I ever. Made. It's disturbing. Obscure. Obscure. Okay. Which disturbs me. <laughs> well, uh, my earlier work is pretty much available. Uh, this movie is you can see on Amazon, but also it's it's available on DVD. <laughs> Uh, it's available on Blu-ray. No, and maybe not a Blu-ray. No, no Blu-ray. It's, Blu but DVD. it's available on DVD. Yeah, you can you can you can find it if you look hard. <laughs> but but, Joe, but Joe's other films are are widely yeah. available and on both on DVD and and on Amazon and on on uh, other uh, platforms. Yes. Well, you know, when, when, when movies are made, they're, they're made by certain regimes and certain studios. And sometimes you make a movie and the regime changes during the making of the movie, and they don't want the movie to be successful because it makes the previous owners look good, and so they dump it. Uh, and the HBO currently run by a bunch of people who have nothing to do with the people who made the second civil war. And, and, and HBO has been gloriously interested in reviving its old there's no, they have, the, they, they, they don't have an HBO other than HBO, and they only run new stuff. So it's difficult to see the material. Um, I, I don't think it's on purpose. I think they just feel that there's, it just happens to be owned by them. It's just another movie in the library. They don't really have to particular, which is too bad because it could be a nice show on HBO. 
And, and, and it's also to uh, add to what Joe was saying, for us to show it, we had to ask, you know, special licensing from, from the HBO, which they gave us on the condition that we wouldn't issue a ticket. So that it would be a donation only screening. So they are very, they're, they're very specific policy that unfortunately prevents some of, some of the good things they've done, like this one, to be w more widely known. But actually, that's not their policy. They're dealing with the, uh, the unions. And the, the, the agreement that the actors made, for instance, <laughs> in this movie, was that it's, it's not going to be shown theatrically in America, or else a different, a different level of residuals kicks in. And it costs them more money. So every time I've ever run this movie in 35 millimeter uh, here in Hollywood, I've always had to do it for free mm -hmm. and say, it's, it's give us a donation, or uh, but you can't actually say that you're making money from it. It, it triggers a whole lot of complicated legal questions that they, they don't want to bother with. Any other questions? I think we're good, Joe. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Hey, Frog. No, no, hold on. There is one more question. Didn't hear that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Are you a fan of Veep, Julia? Do we drive this uh, series? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I like that show, and I, 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 Armando Iannucci is a very his he, he, his films are, so, are somewhat like this. They're they're, they're very funny. Uh, have you seen the death of Stalin? It's really hilarious. I mean. Uh, it, you can do, uh, uh, if they let you, you can do great work with political sector, but it's not uh, a very popular thing. And it, 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 do you think that these days it lends more it's to television, that it's easier to get it done on television than, than on big, for a big screen? That that was always true. It was always easier to do for television than it is for yeah. Well, they have the benefit of being able to be topical. Uh, they can, and, and, and we have a president who does something crazy every other day. So they can, they can amass all those things. And then by Saturday, they've got enough material for a whole show. Uh, however, it, when you're working on a film, it's much more long term. And so you can't be as specific. Kind of satire. The problem is that, you know, television is very ephemeral and uh, it's immediate and you see it and it goes away and you don't see a lot of reruns of Saturday Night Live. I mean, they just, it's, it's always got to be topical. So uh, that's another reason why I think people don't want to do a lot of political movies is because they build a date. And frankly, the second war should be very dated right now. The only thing that's dated about it is the, of the TV screens. Well, this is the proof that this move, some of, some of the political movies don't age. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.